Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat um, and teaching, hopefully as well. Uh, welcome. This is episode number nine hundred nineteen nine one nine, and the topic today is living in the present can help you heal and release your past. This actually is part three of a sequence, and I'll explain the previous two so you know where I am and why we're doing this, and also I'll introduce myself so you know what that's all about. So first of all, hi, welcome to my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby, as you can, in case you didn't figure that already. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I hope women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work, what forms my work with women, and also what inspired these talks three years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 919. I will tell you at the back end where the replays are, so you can find all my previous broadcasts. You can check them out. And as I said, this is part three of a sequence I was talking about being living in the present. So this one's about how you can work on releasing and healing your past. So let me cut, recap the last two broadcasts too, so you know what I'm, so it brings you to, up to date. Although I do recommend you watching those because they're more explained there. So the first one, which was two days ago, yes, two days ago, was um, there's no time like the present. And I was emphatic saying, because literally there's no time like the present, because there's no past or present, there's no past or future, there's just now. Which meant that it's a good practice to have to live in the present moment, because that's the only place there is. So that's the that's a very, very brief cliff note to the talk. So again, I recommend watching that one from two days ago. Yesterday's talk was also about how being in the present is a good way of planning your future, which of course immediately sparked me thinking about the past, which is why I'm doing today's. So yesterday's was really about how you can set up your future vision in the present moment to create where you want to go as an energetic focus. So you don't live in the future, you live in the present, focusing where you want to go. So today we're going to talk about the past. Same premise, of course, which is living in the present because there is no other place except the present, just to recap that one again. But the intention is how to show you that being in the present can actually help you heal and release your past. Because if you're like most people on the planet, you have some past you're not particularly happy about. True? We'll see. So my, my invitation to you is to consider this as an opportunity to go deeper on your own reflection of your, heart, your past and to consider if it's true for you, because it might not be. I'm not saying it is, but it's likely it is because the way we people are wired, we humans are wired. You may not be human, so you know, I don't presume anything. So um, in simple terms, well, let me, let me preface this. In my work with my clients, just to preface this, I do a lot of work with helping them heal and resolve their past issues and their past hurts and past wounds so they can be free of that to move forward to where they want to go in the future. But I'm using this as a teaching point because it all starts in the present moment because every time working with a client, we're always talking in the present, as is kind of obvious, I would trust. You would get that. So how does it help you heal your past more easily? The biggest thing of all, and I'm going to make it very simple because it's really that, the point of this, is that when you're in the present moment, your past doesn't have control over you. Now, if you're someone who's got past traumas, maybe abuse, maybe wounding, maybe other sorts of hurts from past relationships or family dynamics or experiences in life, being in the present moment, when you really do bring yourself immediately present in this moment, none of that actually can control you. Now, it might still impact you energetically, we're going to talk about that in a moment, but it doesn't control you, which means you can be free for a moment. Because for many people, that past wounding, upset, hurt feelings, is constantly nagging, it's constantly um, pulling attention. It's almost basically putting you into the past, to try to pull you into the past energetically, so you're always living in it from a place of wounded, it? wounded, woundedness, that was a better word, or wounding, either one I guess works. So bringing yourself present is not to ignore, by the way, not to ignore the past, but brings you present into this moment so you can be really able to function effectively. Now here's the thing, your past doesn't get healed on its own. Time does not heal all wounds, not, not emotional ones at least. It may heal physical wounds because you get scar tissue and you start to, you know, that sort of thing happens. But emotionally speaking, well actually emotionally speaking, it's kind of the same thing. It's also scar tissue because what's happening is you're covering up the emotions with numbness, but it's not resolving them. It's just, def it's just deferring the pain for later. And that opportunity comes up now if you want to do it. So, in simple terms, because I don't want to keep this succinct and, and, and teachable. When you're in the present moment, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're in the present moment, you can look at your past from a certain distance, a certain detachment, a certain place where you don't immediately dive into the wounding and hurts of the past. Now, 
I'm not speaking about PTSD here because that's a different type of, of, of um, challenge and also a different sort of treatment. Although being in the present moment when you can really get to the present moment can actually alleviate some of the pressure of that. But that's not my expertise, so I don't want to try teaching stuff about that. If you have that situation going on, I advise you to seek out a true therapist who's skilled in that. Not, I'm not going to recommend myself for that, just to be clear. But for other, most of us who aren't dealing with that, we have, again, memories that are emotionally laden. Memories of things that happened in the past. Maybe it was when we were children. Maybe it was with other children, because I went through that myself with being bullied in high school. That was something I had to basically go back and heal because it was it was wounding me from being around basically other men, period, because it was boys that bullied me as a, as a high school student. And so trusting men wasn't easy for me. So I had to heal that to find trust again. So I've been through this journey. But you might be doing something where it's a family dynamic. Maybe you were bullied and pushed around by your siblings, or maybe you weren't loved enough by your parents, or whatever that was. It is what helps, It is what tends to help create the makeup of who you are in the present moment except you don't have to keep living that way. Now, some of the stuff you learned when you were younger, I'm sure you're going to say, that was great, I'm glad it added to who I am. It may be who I am now and I'm grateful for that. Wonderful, if that's the case, awesome. Although you may still have other things to want to resolve. But a lot of people I know have gone through um, less than idyllic upbringing, I'll put it that way. So they're still carrying around a lot of baggage and wounds from the past. I see, I mean, just to be transparent, I see people walking around where I can see, I can tell from their physical posture that there's something unresolved in their emotional baggage because they're almost weighed down by the baggage. And if you look around carefully, you'll see it too. So this is not a pretty picture to play around with. It's not something light I'm speaking about here, but I am telling you there's an easy way to start working on it. Again, this is the starting point, which is to be present. And what I mean literally is to come in the present moment. And as I said before earlier in the other broadcast, it can be as simple as taking a deep breath in and a slow breath out. That can bring you into the present that quickly. When you do this, especially if you start sidebar slightly, for some people those past inf influences and past challenges can create panic attacks in the present moment. Anxiety upsets, feelings of being so upset and wounded, you almost feel like having a heart attack. If you can have presence of mind to bring yourself present, presence, present, yeah, it all ties together, and breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly, it can actually disengage those reflexive energies that come up, that fight or flight or freeze energy that comes up from past memories flooding you from something that's not real anymore. Although, don't really get, okay, hold that thought, sidebar. I talked about how a lot of times in relationships, past stuff shows up to be reflected back to you in the present moment by your partner. This is the challenge with this, so I'll come back to this piece in a moment. I'm holding it to remind me. When you are triggered by a partner or a situation or a circumstance of a past memory that comes up in the immediate moment, the best thing I can recommend you do is what I said here, which is come back to this point and breathe in. There, I knew I'd circle it back. <laughs> that was kind of a quick one. So breathing in and out slowly, it's like the counted to 10 idea, but only it's more impactful for yourself because it resets your physiology. Breathing in slowly, breathing out slowly, first of all, disengages you from your reaction and that um, automatic reflex type mindset which is what a lot of these are past things tie into, but also gives you a chance to look back and go, hang on a second, that's not real. I can choose, choose to respond differently. I'm just dropping little truth bombs in the middle of this. So when you do, in fact, bring yourself present, how I can help you heal your past is, first of all, you become less programmed, triggered, reactionary to what happened in the past. When things happen in the present moment that are reminiscent of or triggering from your past memories, when you take yourself into the present moment, it disengages that issue. So you're no longer carrying that with you. That's one, one step towards freedom. Secondly, when you start to do the work, if you're working with me or somebody else, to actually go back and heal your past, by staying in the present moment, you're in a place, it's almost like you a safe zone. For those of us who are dealing with past traumas, to go back to that time in history is extremely painful and unsafe feeling. When you stay present in this present moment, you create a safety zone, so to speak. This is what I do with my clients, is to really create a place of safety. So when you're looking back at the past, you look back at it from a much more, um, it's like, no, I want to say that, that wasn't a good way of putting it. Let me say another way. It's basically having a chance to look back at your past history from a much more um, healthy vantage point. And from there, you can go back and you can almost, it's almost like you can do, you can do um, like you can, I want to say manipulate is the wrong word. But you can tweak things around and shift things around so you can actually have a much more um, 
successful way of rewriting your history, reprogramming it, changing the paradigm so you can be free of it once and for all. Now I'm not gonna, I can explain the whole thing because that's, that's coaching with me for a few sessions at least. Um, and I will put some links in the comments so you can reach out to me for support if you want to get some, if this is, this is bringing up stuff for you, I can help you with this. So as a principle, especially if you're getting triggered in, this, in the present moment by things that from the past because something somebody says or does or doesn't do or circumstances, situations or just memories that pop up, bring yourself present, take a breath in slowly, breathe out slowly, repeat this if you need to a few times because by doing so it resets your physiology and allows the, fright, the flight, fright or flight, flight freeze or um, Flight, fright, <laughs> I blanked on it. Flight, freeze, or the other one. You'll come back to me in a second. Interesting. Um, it allows that to dissipate. See, I already dissipated it myself. <laughs> flight, fright, or freeze, that was it. There we go. Flight, fright, or freeze. I did say it. Those three, those three energies will dissipate, so you can be present. And so it stops you being, it stops you checking out of situations where you basically just can't even, you don't know what's going on because you're so blanked over because of that immediately, um, that reactive reptilian sense of like, I need to bail. I mean, reptilian brain is what I'm talking about, by the way. That's the, the immediacy of it just, it's, it's instinctual to do the flight, fight or freeze. But when you breathe, you bring so present into your conscious mind so that your reptilian brain, the, the um, ancient part of a brain doesn't, no longer reacts. It becomes, oh, I can breathe, I can be present. Because then you bring yourself present and you can then deal with it as you want to in the present moment. But if you want to go back and do the deep work, getting support for that is important, but remembering to stay present when you do it. Because it's easy to check out or check back in over there where the present past is and feel that trauma repeated. You don't need to. So being in the present moment is a powerful, healthy place to start resolving your past, which is what I was going to talk about. So I hope this makes some sense. This is really, I mean, this, this is a series of three talks that were just light about being in the present moment sounds so good. But reality is it is pivotal for your life. Pivotal for where you want to go, pivotal, pivotal, pivotal for where you've been, and pivotal to be functional right now. Being in the present moment is where I coach my clients, and that's where my clients are when we work together, because that's the way to do the work. That's why I'm passionate about this, although it was a totally out of the blue inspiration that hit me on this, so glad I could help. I will put some links in the comments, as I mentioned. Uh, one, a conversation with me as a gift from me to you. We can talk about what, you, what you're what you looking for, how you need help, how I can help you if you want to resolve some things, if you have any questions, all wrapped up in a little chat. So there'll be a link in the comments for a chat with me so you can talk about that stuff. Um, secondly, um, secondly, what do I want to put in the comments as well? Hmm. Well, a couple of things. One is I'll put the link in the comments, the, the discovery session, as I mentioned. I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation. I did talk about early today online with somebody about that, that self-love is one of these pivot points and my self-love practice is an immediate push, no, immediate movement to put you in the, in the present moment. Because the self-love practice is a mirror exercise where you're looking in your eyes in the present moment. You don't go anywhere else. Don't go in the future. Don't go, don't go, don't go in the future. Don't go in the past. You stay in the present. That'll be in the comments too because that'll help you bring yourself present more easily. It's a powerful little process meditations, workbook, the whole bit's in there. So that'll be in the comments too. Um, those two things would be a good start. I am, I am just letting you know, and if you do click on the console, I'll tell you in the conversation, I am offering some specialized coaching over the next two months because it's the breakthrough to the new year. And if you're looking for some guidance, some clarity, and some next steps, how to create your vision of the new year, I recommend you grab some of that too. That's gonna be a special offer that I'm putting out, but you just reach out and chat with me first. So click on the chat link, find out more information from that. That's where you do that. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, replays. So this is my daily Facebook Live. If you haven't seen me before, surprise, I've done this for a while now. Um, this is episode 919, as I mentioned. That means there's 918 besides it's already out there. Where, you ask? I hope you're asking. First of all, if you want to watch my live broadcast, I go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week, right here on my personal page. Sometimes the timing moves, but it's every day. Um, you can find me on my personal page, which is Barry Selby, um, sorry, facebook.com slash Barry Selby. That's where you find me easily, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Secondly, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby the author. Please like my page, and there's a bunch of them out there, but not all of them, because Facebook apparently can't keep track of all 900. I'm not gonna get into that. So you can watch some of them on my business page, which is Barry Selby the author, or better yet, if you wanna catch all of them, although you do lose the comments, because those are only on Facebook. 
um, on YouTube, I have a channel, which is Barry Selby, which is actually youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine Middle. All of my broadcasts are found, easy to check, scan through for titles and find keywords to see what you're looking for. So you can watch the replays there, you can watch them on my business page and you can watch me live on my personal page. And that's basically it for today. Um, I hope this is making some sense to you. This is a pivot point for a lot of people to go, oh, I can do something different by staying present. Um, I invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast and the day before because the three of them together make a nice little bookend for this topic. And uh, if you're present, like it's easier. I thank you for watching as always. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below. If you're watching the replay, you can still do that. Just still do that and I'll respond when I sign off. And I do invite you to take care of yourself. When you're present, that's one way of taking care of yourself. So I'm very, very passionate about that too. So having said all that, I thank you for being with me as always. And uh, that's it. Go enjoy your evening and take care of yourself and be present. And as I said before, and as, say, as I'm saying more often than not, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.